Welcome to our Facebook and YouTube partners. The mission of CWM is to make known the gospel of Jesus throughout the entire world and to teach the word of God to the end that those who believe may be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. Here at CWM, we are committed to impacting lives on purpose. Today's scripture will be coming out of Isaiah chapter 60 verses 1 and 2. And it says, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and the thick darkness is over the peoples, but the Lord rises upon you, and his glory appears over you. I have read to you Isaiah chapter 60, verses 1 and 2. May it add a blessing to the doer and the hearer of the word. Hallelujah. Oh, glory, God, we lift you up. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, God, we come before you in the mighty name of your son, Jesus. God, we lift you up this morning, Father God. We abandon everything that we think that should happen today, God. You said in your word, God, if you be lifted up, that you would begin to draw all men unto you, Lord Jesus. And God, we exalt you this morning, God. We lift our hearts before you, Father God. We lift our minds before you, Father God. We worship you this morning. We worship you this morning. We exalt the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the only one, the matchless name of Jesus, the Christ, the Messiah, the living Word of God. Is there anybody in the house want to exalt the King of Kings today? God, I'm so grateful for the blood, the blood that was shed on Calvary, Father God, the blood that washes, the blood that cleans, the blood that redeems. Anybody in the house today that knows you're redeemed of the Lord, God, we worship you, we exalt you, hallelujah. Have your way today, God. Have your way today, God. Move, Holy Spirit. We welcome you in this place. We abide in this place today, God. Without you, Holy Spirit, we can do nothing. So, Father God, let the Holy Ghost have his way. Whatever your way is this morning, we're conducive to moving it, God. If it's worship, we'll worship. If it's praise, we'll praise. Oh my God, the atmosphere to shift and move, oh God, in the spirit of the living God. Let everyone that have breath praise him. Move over the minister today, God. Move over the word today, God. Life-giving word, God, over our bishop, God. We thank you for this house, God, and that you planted, oh God, in this vineyard, God. So we pray, God, that you move, move over the word that's about to come forth. Let life, God, bring someone out of their bondage today, God. Set someone free today, Father God. Let your worship, let the praise come out of the praise team today, God. Anoint the musicians, God. Let them come out of fire, oh God. Let out of your spirit, oh God. Oh, we thank you now, God. Do I have any glory carriers that's about to go to another level? We don't need church as usual. We don't know how God wants to come. Don't get sent in a way that you think he will come. But God, we lift you up. Oh, God, we lift you up. Have your way. In the name of Jesus, amen. Have your way. Hallelujah, 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 hallel
Hallelujah. 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 I don't know about you, but I can't do nothing but praise God this morning. Hallelujah. 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 I don't know about you, but the fire has turned up in my life. But I praise the God in spite of, in spite of my health, in spite of my finances. Hallelujah. 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 I have an in spite of praise this morning. Hallelujah. 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 Glory, 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 God. Glory, 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 God. Oh, glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Oh God, I praise you. God, I lift you up. God, I magnify your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I'm going to chase after him this morning. I'm going to run him down. Hallelujah, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. I'm chasing after you, no matter what I have to do, because I need you more and more. Everybody, I'm chasing after you, no matter what. Lord, I need you. Chasing after you, no matter what, Lord, I need you. More and more, more and more, more and more, more.
presence of God. At the mention of his name, nothing else matters. Everything else has to flee. In the presence of a new, a true, and living Savior, every demon has to flee. Every upset has to disappear. Every heart has to be mended. There's nobody like you. And no power greater than your name. At the mention of your name, every knee will bow, every tongue confess. That you are, you are Lord. Oh, oh, oh. Cause at the mention of your name, every knee must bow, every tongue confess that you are, you are Lord. Hey, see at the mention of your name. i 
worship us.
a child needing their father, you lift your hands waiting, waiting for him to pick you up. Hey, I tell you to lift them today because he's ready to pick you up. He's ready to rescue you from that place. He's ready to come and grab his baby and say, don't you worry about a thing. Daddy is in the room. Daddy is here now. Hallelujah. We honor you today. We honor you today. We bless the name of the Father. So, Father, we say welcome into this place. Welcome into this broken vessel. Welcome. Father, we bless you all today. Have your way. Move up and down every aisle. Move up and down every aisle. Touch every heart. Touch every heart. Touch every mind. Have your way in this place. We move ourselves out of the way. And we say, God, it's your way today. Come on, somebody. Say, Father, it's your way today. It's your way today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we give your name glory. We give your name the honor. And we give your name the praise. Now come on and make one more thunderous sound in this place. Come on, you can do better than that. Make a... One more thunder. One more thunderous sound for the Father. welcome you Yahweh we welcome you in this place we welcome you Yahweh have your way Jesus Woo! Hey! David touch your heart King David, King David, touch your heart, touch your heart now. Touch your heart, son. On behalf of you and your wife, I hear the King David, you know, I hear the father saying that he's touching your hearts now. I hear the scripture, let not your heart be troubled. The father knows exactly what he's doing. You've just got to trust him to have his way. And God says that he's blanketing you now with the peace of God that surpasses your human understanding. Put it in his hands. Give it to him. Your worship will be that that God, I trust you. And God, I thank you. Because you never lost a battle and you never lost a case. Somebody worship the Lord. WM, where we're impacting lives on purpose. We're impact, impacting lives on purpose. Yes, Lord. Welcome to all of our Facebook and YouTube partners, all of you that are watching us via live stream. We welcome you this morning. We ask that you go ahead and grab your Bibles. We're going to walk through the word this morning. Hallelujah. But I need the glory, the spirit of the glory carriers to stay, remain, to remain, to remain in this house. Amen. I don't want you to drop your praise. I don't want you to drop your worship. But I want you to know and understand that there's a simple word. 
simple word, a simple word, a simple word that the Lord wants to release today <laughs> to all the glory carriers. How many of you know that I know hold on as glory carriers we understand the, pr the purpose of, of the glory carrier we understand and we've received instructions from our man of God as what we are called to do as a glory carrier but even though we know and understand and the instructions have been given, what the Lord began to deal with me about is that there are, um, there's tools and there's things that he's given us to empower us, y'all. As we go about completing this assignment as a glory carrier. Yes, Lord. He said that we know and understand that we need power and then we must understand the powers that are available to us as a glory carrier. So this week, the Lord began to speak to my heart concerning the power series. Somebody say power series. We're going to get us empowered. We're going to get some, some power around here. You understand? And it was so crazy because Bishop began to talk on Friday night for y'all that weren't there, wouldn't know, and I wouldn't understand. But he began to talk about the blood. The power of the blood. Lord, have mercy. And he began to tell the people, he began to say how so many times we're praying and we're releasing, we're decreeing, we're declaring, and we're doing all of that and having no results. And he began to say that the Lord began to show him that it's because we wasn't applying the blood. So I begin to seek God, seek the Lord even more after Friday night. Because I need to know more about this blood that we I need to remember the power of the blood. Because the old people used to always see that son. It's nothing but the blood. Nothing but the blood. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood. Y'all better talk to me in here today. So, we got to bring the blood back. Got to bring the blood back. We've got to remember that we're supposed to apply the blood everywhere we go. Over every situation. Over every circumstance. Over my children applying the blood. Come on, Bishop, say we gotta be smeared in the blood. So, this is my Bible. It is the Word of God. And I believe what it says. I am who it says I am. I can be who it says I can be. I can do what it says I can do and I can have what it says I can have now I want you to decree in this house that father I need the power of your blood oh come on and bless him in this place yes Lord the power the power the power Wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power. Wonder working power in the blood. You may take your seats. I'm going to read a little bit and then we'll go to our scriptures. Lord, have mercy. In this power series, we're going to go over a few things. Hallelujah. In this series. Now bear with me because these little apparatuses work. Do, they ain't doing what they want to do. Amen. <laughs> I want to say to you today that there is immense power in the blood of Jesus. 
and it, but it's one of the most misunderstood things in the word of God. Many people try to hold, try to use the blood almost like a magic potion. Remember Bishop always say, this ain't no Allah, peanut butter and jelly sound. This ain't no magic trick. It's a principle that we must apply. But even in applying the principles, y'all gonna hear this in a minute. I'm gonna get in ahead of myself. But even in applying the principles, you got to be a born again believer, child of God. Everybody can't just apply it and expect God to move. All right. So often we look for the kind of power that works miracles, does signs and wonders and brings blessings. But we don't use the power that's available to every single one of us every day. There's tremendous power that God has put at our disposal. Somebody says, it's at my disposal. I can use it when I need it. Lord, have mercy. So in this power series, we're going to look at five different types of power that's available to the glory carries. Five of them. Today we're going to talk about the power of the blood. Then there's the power of praise and worship. There's power in the name of Jesus. Y'all ain't talking. There's power in God's word. And there's power by way of the Holy Spirit. All of that is available to us as believers. So we're looking at something which is right at the foundation of the Christian faith which is the power of the blood. We're going to look at these three scriptures, I mean these three things that scripture teaches us that are achieved by applying the blood. Somebody say cleansing. <laughs> it's amazing because uh, Evangelist Carter began to talk about the cleansing and the redemption power and she began to open up in prayer and she had no idea that we was going to be talking about the power of the blood so the first one is a cleansing somebody know that stains can be a real problem ever been at a table and you were eating and yep 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 butter begin to drip down the front of your shirt or ketchup begin to stain your shirt it was the hardest thing to get them stains out anybody do i have a witness i still got shirts right now that's got that same butter stain oh y'all ain't talking while i was eating them you know yeah, same butter stain dripping down the front of my shirt. And I done shouted it out. I done bleached it out. I done done everything. But nothing got that stain out. So if you ever drop something down the front of your shirt, you know it's difficult to get it out. We got, listen, in, in all over Amazon, I begin to search uh, different remedies for stains. <laughs> and it looks like all of them got over oh, this the best one this the best one this the best one and they got all these remedies to get stains out lord have mercy they got books about it how you can get a, this kind of red uh wine stains and this kind of stain and everything that you gotta have to get these stains out with very detailed instructions mind you as to what you gotta have to get it out it tells you how to remove stains that's caused by acids and glues and blood and antiperspirants and ink pens and barbecue sauce. Y'all, <laughs> it tells you all of that and how to get it out. But how can you deal with all these stains? It says that you need a complicated kit. Listen, here go what all the, all the remedies got in it. It's got, you got to have lemon juice and ammonia and vinegar and glycerine and soda water and salt and borax y'all ain't talking <laughs> all these things are included in this one remedy that you gotta have to get a stain out yet the stain still remains but there's a stain so deep that absolutely nothing on that list can remove y'all ain't talking to me i said there's a sin in us that is so deep that none of those 
those remedies can remove it. But it's a stain that I know that Jesus the Christ, listen, his blood that was shed for us on Calvary's cross, it can remove any kind of stain. Thanks be to God that his blood was made available for us over 2,000 years ago. Most powerful stain remover ever known to man is that blood. The blood of Jesus. And in Revelation chapter 1, you can go there, verse 5 and 6. We're going to read it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Woo. The best stain, remain, stain remover ever known to man. Revelation chapter 1, 5 and 6 says, To him who loved us and washed us from our sins. Somebody say stain remover. In his own blood. Verse 6, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. So he cleansed us from the stain of sin by the washing us in his blood. Of course, all stain removers need to be used according to the manufacturer's instructions. You know, you buy those bottles and even on the back it's got all these directions and instructions as to how you got to dilute it and how you got to do this and spread six, uh, six inches away from the club. Y'all ain't talking. <laughs> all these instructions. But according to the manufacturer's instructions and the blood of Jesus has no exceptions. Somebody say, it has no exceptions. It comes with instructions. I say the blood comes with instructions. So how does it work, Pastor, is what you're asking me. How do we apply this blood? How do we apply this blood that it works in my life, that it cleanses me from all my sins? How do I apply this blood that I don't have to walk around every day with a guilty conscience, that I don't have to walk around every day wondering if the Lord still loves me? Both kinds of sin, somebody says two, are cleansed by the blood of Jesus. But the blood is activated. Somebody say activated. It's activated differently in each case. So the first is known, the first known is sin. Sin in our lives that we are aware of. Somebody say known sin. We all have sins that we know that we're committing. <laughs> Let me say that again. In case y'all ever thought y'all wasn't committing none and y'all y'all miss good at two shoes and you know y'all treating everybody right and you loving everybody <laughs> and I ain't got no sin in my life. Let me help you. The Bible say all have sin. Okay. So when we become conscious, conscious, conscious of the sins that we're committing, how can we appropriate the cleansing power of the blood? Somebody say 1 John 1, 9. Y'all got it? Look at these Bible scholars. They writing it down. That's what I'm talking about. 1 John 1, 9. How do you apply this cleansing agent power of the blood? When you know that you committed a sin, you know you've done something wrong, you know that you did something that wasn't pleasing to the Father, you know because there's a Holy Spirit conviction that comes upon us when we commit sin or when we do something that we know was not of God. There's a convicting power by way of the Holy Spirit. So how do I cleanse myself from this thing that I know I just done I go to 1 John 1, 9, and he says, this is, look now, this is the instructions. This is the remedy of the cleansing agent, the blood. Lord oh, have mercy. It says, if we confess our sins, not if I cover it up, not if I hide it, not if I ignore it, not if I try to act like I didn't do it, but he said, when we confess, acknowledge, come clean of 
the fact that I know I did this thing. And we confess those sins to Jesus. He didn't say go around telling everybody that you did it. He said all you got to do is confess it to Jesus. Said that he is faithful and he's just to forgive. Somebody say forgive. Yes, Lord. To forgive us of our sins. Listen. And to cleanse us. Yes, baby, that's right. Hallelujah. He cleanses us from all unrighteousness. All we got to do is read the instructions. 1 John 1, 9 ought to be forever in our forefront. It should be one that we never forget because every single day I need to be cleansed. Every day. So to confess means that I've got to admit it. I've got to take responsibility for it. I can't keep making excuses. <laughs> and I can't keep blaming everybody else. They made me do it. They made me act up. They made me cuss them out. They made me know. Take responsibility for yourself. So the blood of Jesus cleanses sin, but it does not cleanse excuses. Say it again. I said the blood of Jesus cleanses sin, but it does not cleanse excuses. And our problem today is that we have the tendency to want to make excuses. We want to cover it up. But as a glory carrier and a messenger of the gospel, we cannot hide it. We can't keep covering up. We can't keep ignoring it. Why? Because we always need to be cleansed through the blood. Bible say, get it off you quickly. Get the blood off you quickly. Come on. Come on, get it off you quickly. That means I should never go to bed, not one day. Not repenting of my sins. Not asking the Father to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Come on, this unrighteous mind that keep wandering, keep thinking. Come on, keep traveling through time. Listen, that was way back there. Your mind's still traveling. Every night. Before I lay my head down, a part of my prayer before I go to sleep is Father, cleanse me from sins known and unknown, sins committed and omitted. I cover all the bases. Because you know why? What if I don't wake up? What if I don't wake up the next morning? I have already made it right with the Father. And my righteous standing will to be with Jesus in the heavenly places. Oh, I'm teaching it. Because I don't want none of my children to listen. Look, wake up dead. <laughs> Who you somebody? I don't want none of my kids to go to bed and not wake up the next morning and you have not gotten it right with the Father. Amen. So covering up achieves nothing. But confession brings total cleansing. Y'all need to tell this. Look, tell somebody, say, look, covering up, it don't achieve nothing. But when you confess it before the Father, it brings a total cleansing. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the power of your blood. Thank you for the power of your blood that's available to me. Thank you for the power of your blood that's available to cleanse me. Wash me. Lord, have mercy. I want to give you an illustration of how powerful this blood is. You ever watched a show where you've seen, and I think they do it in the Olympics, I can't remember, but there's a tightrope uh, uh, activity where they're standing on this thin rope 
and they got this bar that they balance with and they got to step on that rope just right or they going to fall. Oh, y'all. We got to walk in this thing just right or we going to fall. Lord, have mercy. <laughs> he said there is a way that's known to man. Y'all ain't talking to me tonight. Oh, God. So they walk on this tightrope hundreds of feet in the air and if they don't step on that rope just right they have the potential of falling but just in case they fall it's a safety net waiting at the bottom of the I said it's a safety net waiting for them when they fall I want to tell you that the blood is a safety net that when you fall, oh Lord have mercy, it's catching you, and all you gotta do is confess your sin to the Father. Somebody say, I got a safety net. It's called the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. So, how can we be cleansed of something? So we have the, the known sin, but then we have those unknown sins. So the question is, how do you be cleansed from something that you don't know? Okay, let's go there. Something that you don't know. How do I confess of something that I don't know I did? First John 1, 7. Thank you, media team. Y'all got that thing. Y'all right. First John 1, 7 says, But if we walk in the, as he is in the, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. So what is the instruction? That I got to walk in the light. So somebody may say, well, Pastor, what does that mean? What, what does walking in the light mean? Being obedient to the word. Somebody say, that's simple. So you thinking walking in the light, I don't know what uh, came to your mind when it said walk in the light. But I want to say to you that walking in the light means that I'm going to walk upright before the Father. Come on, somebody. I'm going to be obedient to the Word of God. I'm going to be obedient and I'm going to follow the principles that are outlined in the Word of God. That if I offend my brother, Because that's one that we so quickly overlook. That we offend people or we take offense and we keep walking in it. I want to say to you, you need to be cleansed. Ain't nobody saying nothing. It's so easy for us to be offended by the simplest little things. It's so easy for us to take offense when there is no offense even given. But that's because of the internal conflict that is in us that we have not dealt with again. It keep coming up. Somebody say, Father, cleanse me of my internal conflicts. That I may walk in the light. So to walk in the light is to be obedient to the truth that God has already revealed to us in his word we're obedient to the things God has already shown us according to this particular verse 1 John 1 and 7 two things can happen he said one we'll have fellowship with other Christians y'all know y'all like the fellowship y'all know y'all like parties y'all like hanging out you like being around people and it's okay because Christians are supposed to fellowship yeah, oh yeah. Forsake not to assemble yourselves together. That's fellowship. Okay. So we are to fellowship with other Christians. Here it is. The natural result of walking in the light is that Christians, Christians should want to be around other Christians. Check this out. 
when a Christian don't want to be around other Christians, it's evidence that they ain't walking in the light. I want to go to church today. I got something else to do. I got somewhere else to be. And there's an opportunity for you to fellowship. Oh. The light might expose me. That's what light does. When you turn light on, darkness dissipates and everything in the light is illuminated. <sighs> So I can't hang out with them Christians too much. <laughs> it might expose me. Just come on and hang out. But before you come, go to 1 John 1, 9 and ask the Father to cleanse you. <laughs> just ask him to cleanse you. Go ahead and get it off you. Come on, go ahead and get it off you. And just ask the Father to cleanse me. So when you come in much with the other believers, we can all fellowship together on one accord. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So the second thing that happens is that the blood of Jesus is applied and it cleanses us from all sin. Listen, including the stuff we're not even aware of yet. So the blood cleanses us from the sin we don't know about when we confess. And it cleanses us from, from the sins that we aren't aware of as we're walking in the light. Somebody say, it's something uh, that we should do daily. It's a daily. This is a daily dose. This is a daily cleansing. Y'all ain't talking. This is not something that we ought to skip over. This is not a big sin and a little sin. It's all sin. Y'all ain't talking to me. I said, this ain't a big sin and a little sin. It's all sin. And every single day, I need to be blood washed. Every single day, I need to be cleansed by the blood of Jesus. So it cleanses us from all of our sins. So the first thing that happens when we apply the blood is that it's a cleansing agent. The second thing that the blood allows for us as glory carriers is it grants us access somebody say access it grants us access into the presence of god if you remember back in old testament that no one could go in the presence of god but the priests because if you went in the presence of god and you were unclean you would die Lord, have mercy. Even when they were carrying the ark of the the ark of the covenant, remember he began to uh, what's his name? Uh, 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 uh. Oh Lord, what's this on the tip of my tongue? That reached out and touched the um, touched the ark, and he was struck down. Hmm? Yes, it's a name. It's one. Hold on, let me find him. Uzziah. Uzziah did it. Uzziah reached out and he began to touch the ark with his dirty self, y'all. And as he began to touch the ark of the covenant, the presence of God was so heavy. It was so overwhelming that it said the moment he touched it, he was struck dead. Y'all better tell your neighbors, don't play with the presence. Don't go in there praying to God all kind of ways. You better make sure you don't got yourself cleansed before you go in his presence. Because you might not come out. Oh, y'all ain't talking. I said you just might not come out. So it grants us access into the presence of God. In Hebrews 4.16, it tells us that we now can come boldly to the throne of grace. That we may obtain mercy and find grace in the time that we need it. Anybody need grace and mercy? So you have access, believer, to the presence of God that whenever I feel that I need him, I have free course and I can go into his presence. Somebody say, Lord, have mercy. Bold access. Somebody say bold access to the very throne of God. So 
I wonder if we can appreciate what that means though and the magnitude of what God is offering to us as believers because as I said earlier in the Bible in the Old Testament I'm reminded of a time when Esther and went, went and Mordecai remember she uh, Mordecai wanted her to go before the king and Esther began to say no and nobody can just go before the king you got to have access you got to be given permission you can't just walk up to the king and ask what you will <laughs> And even though she was the queen, the law that you had to be granted permission, it was still applicable to her. Oh, Lord. Some of y'all think y'all better than everybody else and y'all got more access. You ain't got no more access than I do. The law still applies. You got to be cleansed and blood washed before you go into the presence of God. Don't care what your title is. Don't care what your position is. It still applies. You've got to have access. And according to Exodus 33 and 20, and I think Bishop made mention of this last week, that no one could see God and live in the glory. His presence was so heavy. It was so powerful that Moses couldn't even look upon God and live in his... Y'all ain't talking. His presence is holy. Somebody say holy. Oh, God. Nobody was allowed to touch the ark because it represented the very presence and the very essence of the holiness of God. <laughs> God's presence was regarded as holy and access into God's presence was limited in that time. Somebody say in that time. But the moment Jesus died, the moment he shed in his blood, and the moment I transitioned from a sinner to a believer and I accepted God in my life as my Lord and my Savior, access was granted. Access was granted. The Bible says Jesus died and the veil was rent. Granting us now access into the holy place. Lord have mercy. So the blood of Jesus had brought us, brought for us a free access pass into the holy presence of God. Hebrews 10 and 19 said, Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter into the holiness of the presence of God. How? By the blood of Jesus. Can't go in any kind of way. And I believe many of us have tried. And you went in and came out feeling the same way you went in. But the Bible says that in his presence is fullness of joy. I should not come out of his presence still feeling like a sinner. I shouldn't come out of his presence still feeling like I did when I went in. I shouldn't come out of his presence still feeling guilty. Y'all ain't talking to me. I should come out of his presence free. So, number one was that the power of the blood cleanses me. Number two is that the power of the blood gives me access into his presence. And number three, she mentioned this one too this morning. It grants me redemption. Now, as a believer, y'all should have been running all over this building. Redemption. But that's because you don't understand the power that's been granted to you. That's because you don't understand what the blood does for you. That's because you don't really understand the fullness of your salvation. 
because once you understand the fullness of your salvation and the salvation package that you're given come on the benefit package of salvation there should always be a, 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 a response when the name redemption is mentioned Ephesians 1 and 7 says in him we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace so this is how redemption used to work under the law of Moses in Exodus you don't have to turn there in Exodus 21 28 through 30 it says if an ox gores a man or a woman to death then the ox shall surely be stoned and its flesh shall not be eaten but the owner of the ox shall be acquitted. Somebody say he gotta be go, he gotta go to jail. But if if the ox intended to thrust with its horns in times past, and if it has been made known to his owner, and he has not kept it confined, the owner ain't kept the ox confined, so that it has killed a man or a woman, the ox shall be stoned, and the owner also shall be put to death. If there is imposed on him a sum of money, he shall pay to redeem his life or whatever is imposed upon him. That means that in the Old Testament, they had to pay a price for redemption. Lord have mercy. They had to be go, they had to be go before the judge to see what the penalty of what they what they done was gonna cost them. Oh my God. So they work out a deal. Lord Jesus. Somebody say work out a deal. We ain't in the business of working out no deals with God. So they work out a deal. And the man has to pay a sum of money in exchange to save his life. That act of paying a price in exchange for life is what they call redemption. His life was forfeited but he was able to buy it back. But why in the world would I need to be redeemed? First John 5 and 19, here's why you gotta be redeemed. Say the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. All of us, the whole entire world falls under the sway of the enemy. But Romans 6 tells us we were slaves to the power of sin. Romans 8.15 says we were in bondage and had a spiritual bondage. Lord have mercy. So this whole world was enslaved to the enemy. And our lives were forfeited. But thanks be to God for the blood of Jesus who paid the full price. Somebody say full. Not lay away. Not some of it. He paid the full price. The full price to redeem us from this sinful state. The full price to buy us back from slavery to freedom. Y'all ain't talking. The full price. Which means I ain't got to work for it. Y'all ain't talking. You know, some of us think we got to work for salvation and we got to work for the glo the grace of God. We got to work for it. No, you ain't got to work for it. You just got to repent and ask to be cleansed. So simple. So simple. That's what God told me. He said, just release this simple word. It's going to set some people free today this simple word because many of you did not understand the power of the blood you did not understand the power that comes with your salvation package but it's simple baby all you got to do is repent and ask for forgiveness and get under the blood Lord have mercy thank you Jesus for paying the ultimate price for me Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father, for giving your son as a sacrifice. Thank you, God. I don't know where I'll be. I don't know what I'll be doing. 
I don't know where the crazy man would be. But thank you, Jesus, for giving your life. The Bible says he laid down his own life. They didn't have to beg him. The father didn't have to plead with him. He looked down and saw the mess that we were in and said that if I'm the only way that they can come out, I'll go, daddy. And we were bought with a price. One that none of us could pay. One that none of our family members could pay. Nobody on this earth could pay this price. Why? Because you had to be clean. <laughs> it couldn't be a lamb that was spotted. It could not. It had to be a sacrificial lamb that was clean. Knew no sin. Jesus knew no sin. Which is why he was the ultimate sacrifice. To pay the price to redeem us back. Almost done. Acts 20 and 28 says, Therefore, take heed to yourselves and to all the flock among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to shepherd the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. That's a call to leaders. Take heed to yourselves and all your flock because the Holy Spirit has made us overseers we oversee us and we oversee y'all someone may ask what's so special about the blood how can the blood of one man pay the price and redeem this whole entire world I want to give you an illustration of a bank robber and how the bank robber <laughs> look it's a it's a bank robbery gone wrong somebody say bank robbery gone bad but the robber goes in armed to a bank and he's got dozens of hostages that he's threatening to kill and a public spirited citizen walks past and notices the plight of all the hostages and calls out to the robbers and say hey don't hurt them don't harm them. Don't do anything to them. Take me instead. Just release them. Just take my life. Lord, have mercy. And the adulterers respond, why would I exchange 12 hostages for just one of you? What makes your life so important that if I just take you and I release them, then I'll be compensated for what I'm about to do. In the illustration, it's the value for one. I mean, the value for a value. Meaning, uh, the value of one particular thing is going to equal to the value of what I'm expecting in return. One life for one life. This same principle was taught in the Old Testament called the Law of Talion. In Exodus 21, 23 through 25, it says, But if any harm follows, then you shall give life for life. Eye for eye. Y'all remember? Tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for a foot. Burn for a burn, a wound for a wound, and a stripe for a stripe. It's a spiritual principle that you can only be compensated by the same amount as the loss. My God. The same principle now carries over into the New Testament and into the spirit realm. Jesus was just one human. He would be able to give his life but only if, if, if this was the principle then he would only be able to give his life for just one of us and the rest of y'all got to go to hell I'm going with Jesus but y'all going to as a sinless perfect human he would have to choose which sinner he going to save if we were still under that law 
<laughs> oh God. But one life for one life, value for a value, is the law of Talion. But because, somebody say, but because. He's fully human and fully divine. Oh, Lord. That makes him worth infinitely more than an ordinary human being. His infinite value means that he could die for everybody. All sinners who ever lived will live forever because of his blood. Redemption. Somebody say, thank God. I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Somebody give him glory. Because the blood of Jesus has power. Has power to cleanse me. It has power that gives me access into its presence. And it has power to redeem me from the curse of the law. I've been redeemed by the blood, the shed blood of Jesus. Woo! Been redeemed by his blood. Hey. I've been redeemed by his blood. Hey, 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 hey. Oh, God. I've been cleansed by his blood. Hey, God. Ready up. If I came in here this morning and I wasn't clean when I came in, you just been cleansed by your blood. Already I say, yes, Lord, yes, God. Blood of Jesus has so much power. And I hate to say it, but we've just been watering down the blood. We've been watering it down. We've been watering it down and it had no power because we didn't put no, no value to the blood. But I want to tell you to bring back the power of the blood. Bring back the power of the blood in your life today. No more water down. No more trickle down. But give it full power. Full power of the blood. That it cleanses you. And it sets you free forever. Somebody say no longer bound. I've been set free. I've been redeemed. By the blood. Of the Lamb. Hallelujah. Somebody give him glory. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your blood. Thank you for your life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for loving me enough to die for my sins. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for loving me enough to go to the cross. Yes, Lord. Pierced in your side, hung down and died. Thank you, Jesus. Let the blood, the blood. Let the blood, the blood. Let the blood, the blood. blood of Jesus. Now when they sing that song, that old hymn, it should have meaning for you. It should add value to your salvation. When they say, I know it was the blood. 
I know it was the blood that saved me. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. You can sing alone and you understand. Hey, that it was the blood of Jesus. Hey, it was nothing but the blood. Hey, God, I thank you. Hallelujah. The power of the blood. Very simple principle that we have long let go. We've allowed it to be a distant memory. We attributed it to just grandma now. But I want to tell you today, you better bring that blood back. You better make it a part of you. Y'all ain't hearing me. You better exercise your faith, hallelujah, and begin to apply the blood. Listen, they said that in the old days, the petition went out that the, they were supposed to kill everybody. All the men, children, all the men, but the instructions was given. If you just apply the blood over your doorpost, the death angel that a pass by. Somebody said that was then, but it's still relevant today. I gotta go home and apply the blood. No premature deaths. No premature deaths. Because I'm applying the blood. Listen, apply the blood in your vehicles. Apply the blood in your home. Apply the blood over your children. Apply the blood over your bank account. Apply the blood over your husband. Apply the blood over your wives. Somebody say, I got to apply the blood. of Jesus has never lost his power. We just didn't put value to it and we didn't apply it. But it still works. Somebody give it to us. Somebody give it glory. Somebody honor the Father today. Listen, your praise ought to be different now. I say your praise ought to be different now. Because now I understand that there's power in the blood. Now I understand that in the salvation package, listen, I've been redeemed and brought back. Y'all ain't talking. Come on, bitch.
when I was a little boy I was born in a little town just north of here maybe a hundred miles the little town was called Willacoochee Georgia I was born on December 3rd 1970 in my grandmother's house in my grandmother's bed and I've been told that I was the grandson of a sharecropper who's the proud the field for a long time up until my grandfather passed away I was his pride and joy to call him Papa he used to call me Papa He say, well, Bishop, why are you telling us that? Because somewhere along the way, my mom moved me to Brunswick, Georgia. But those stories about my grandfather, my grandmother was a preacher, a stern woman, anointed from the top of her head to the sole of her feet. So anointed she could say that our father prayer, which is a simple but yet powerful prayer. We will be in a little shotgun church, probably not much bigger than this one. She'll walk around that church and by the time she got to the other side, everybody in the house was saying in the spirit, they did not have the benefits of heat and AC. They had one little brace, bass drum. And he hit with that, hit that bass drum. The presence of the Lord will be in that, in that place. And they would have the little scratch book. Scrub, well. And then as it pertains to my grandfather, he was sharecropper and they would crop tobacco and put pick I mean uh, uh put pick cotton and you know a number of other things, sugar cane and all that different kind of stuff. And because I knew where I came from. They shared the stories, and no matter where I was, I always valued where I came from. Y'all didn't hear what I said. What you saying, Bishop? Every now and again, you got to go back and resurrect the old landmarks. Y'all didn't hear what I said. The stories that I would hear about my ancestors affected me so much, infused me with intestinal fortitude because they didn't have much. But it was a legacy that they left that had the power. As I became an adult and was raising a family for myself, I wanted my children to be impacted and know where they came from, where the family started. Y'all didn't hear what I said. And every now 
now and again. I would take my babies back across the railroad track in Willacoochee, Georgia. And I would take them, the house is gone now, but I would take them to the old little house and say, this is where we started from. Y'all didn't hear what I said. This is where we came from. Huh? Show them the, how small the city was. It's so small, if you slap, snap your finger, you'll be out of it. That only had a caution light in the Swanee 7 Eleven, if that. But no matter how small, it's, how small it was, it produced great things. <laughs> what am I saying to you that every now and again you got to go back and visit where you came from okay 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 what I'm saying is every now and again you got to go and visit the place where you got saved Okay, let me do it like this. Every now and again, you got to visit the place you got blood on you. Yo, y'all hear what I said? Y'all didn't get it. 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 I, I Listen, I need some bloody people to understand that every now and again, you need to bring it back to the blood. Y'all didn't hear what I'm saying? You need to understand that every now and again, you need to visit the fountain of the blood y'all don't hear what i'm saying every now and again you got to bring your babies to the fountain of the blood every now and again you got to get yourself under the fountain of the blood with your bloody self ministering a message on Friday. And I realized that we are teaching a whole lot of stuff. Principles to get rich. Principles to get God to do something. Principles to, you know, and all this kind of stuff. But I believe that the people of God have left the fountain of the blood. I remember why, yeah, listen, I think we're so educated now that we forget about the blood of Jesus. The simple or simplistic things of our salvation. The message was an attitude of gratitude. And I realized that I could give you a lump sum of money. But your attitude of gratitude will soon fade. Just like that money will fade. Y'all don't hear what y'all are you with me? It doesn't matter a lot of times what people do for you. Your attitude of gratitude will fail, fail, fade. Some of the stuff people have done for you have already faded away. And it has, it had value at the time. But a lot of times, the value of the thing they did or gave you fades from your heart or even from your mind but he had me to minister on an attitude of gratitude and I said to myself where does an attitude of gratitude come from and it's really from somebody doing something for you but that fades but there ought to be something that has happened for you y'all didn't hear what i'm saying 
that the value of it never fades. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. And I realized the greatest thing that we have that has value is not even Jesus, but it's his blood. Y'all didn't hear what I said. It's his blood that came down the cross. Y'all didn't hear what I'm saying. It was his blood that saved you. It was his blood that delivered you. It was his blood that set you free. It was his blood that made a way. It was his blood that turned around. It was his blood that picked you up. It, it was his blood. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. And I said, look at this, Lord. We didn't understand how valued the blood is. And even after all of these years, the blood still has its miraculous power. The blood has not changed. The blood is still doing what it set out to do from day one. Found out when you get discouraged, get discouraged. You don't need a word. You need his blood. I found out when you want to give up and throw in the towel. You don't need nobody to encourage you. Just remember the blood. Come here, somebody. When people walk out on you, just remember the blood. When people lie on you and walk away from you, remember the blood come here somebody when people scandalize your name just remember the blood and if you had not been under the blood in a while it's time to get under the blood so you can become bloody everywhere you go you ought to get some blood on somebody everything you do you ought to get some blood on somebody other folk ought to be bloody because of you. Y'all didn't hear what I'm saying. Everything that you do ought to be bloody because of you. Are you hearing me? Somebody understand the power of the blood. understand the power of the blood like she said you can't be, you can't wash it off you ever notice how red stains up everything you ought to be staining everything in your life y'all didn't hear what I said with a blood that can't be washed off Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. The blood. Still cleansed, but still bloody. Delivered, but still bloody. Set free, but still bloody. I'm a mess, but still bloody. Y'all didn't hear what I'm saying. Lord have mercy. 
I almost, on Friday, I almost didn't know what I was saying. Lord, have mercy. I understand that everything, when you keep it up under the blood, everything's going to be all right. Y'all didn't hear what I said. We cannot forget about the power of the blood. Come on and give God a name. Blood. 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 I plead the blood of Jesus over you. I plead the blood of Jesus over you. I plead the power of the blood of Jesus over you. The blood of Jesus over you, and over your family, over your homes, over your finances, over your children, come here, over your marriage, over your relationships. I plead the blood, I plead the blood, I plead the blood, the blood of Jesus, I plead the blood, I plead the blood. You don't hear anybody today pleading the blood of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus over your situation. I plead the blood of Jesus. Woo! The blood, the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood. The blood. The blood. I said the blood. Not just any blood. The blood of Yahshua. Emmanuel. The Lion of Judah. The Lamb of God. The rose of Sharon. The wheel in the middle of the wheel. The way out of the way. I said the blood. The blood. The blood. Of Jesus. really simple people they didn't have a whole lot of education but I remember the simplicity of the gospel worked for them the simplicity of the gospel and you thought you saw people walking in it in power because the gospel was simple and I want to tell you today that the gospel of Jesus Christ, of Yahshua Emmanuel, internationally known as Jesus the Christ, is still a simple gospel. Just stay under the blood. Put the blood on my mind. I put the blood on my hands. I put the blood all over me. Oh, y'all didn't get it. Y'all didn't get it. Y'all don't get it. I put the blood over everything that concerns me. I cover my past in the blood. I cover my present in the blood. I cover my future in the blood of Jesus. Will you do me a favor? Let's give our pastor a hand. Let's appreciate our pastor. Come on, come on. You can do better than that. Lord, have mercy. It's amazing how God will bring you back to some landmarks that have power. We run around here and we, we anointed, but ain't nobody walking under the blood. We walking around, we walking around here preaching at the top of our lungs till we plumb blue in the face. 
can't get nobody changed, but I realized there wasn't no blood on it. There wasn't no blood on it. There wasn't no blood on it. I would never walk from under this fountain of the blood again. Not they, they, they didn't mess around and messed up. They didn't mess around and messed up. They didn't mess around and messed up. Y'all don't hear what I said. They didn't mess around and messed up. It's the blood. It's the blood. It's the power of the blood. I said, it's the power of the blood. Break addictions. The blood. You know how God see you? Through the blood. You ought to get the same perspective that God has. He's looking at you through the blood of Jesus. He sees us through the blood. It's your blood itself. You're bloody. I know that don't sound good, but everything that's good don't sound good. Everything that's gonna help you don't uh, don't always taste good. Huh? You know, like medicine, they start putting sugar in medicine. I think that took away some of the power. Y'all don't hear what I said? It broke down some of the power. But everything that's supposed to help you don't look, sound, or feel good. The blood. Lord have mercy. Everything my wife saying. That I don't know if that's a song. Uh, you know what? I'm going to tell you something, son. You in the spirit. Because when you first put up that, that up there, I thought it should have been in blood. And I didn't say nothing. I almost said something. I said, no. But you in the spirit. The blood. <laughs> Come on, give God a praise. We have a young lady... We have a young lady that wants to be a member of this. Not a member, not a member, not a member, not a member. We don't have men members, we have partners. Partners means you got a stake, you got a dog in the fight. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying? You got a stake in the place. So, does this, this baby want to come on and still be a member, be a partner in this ministry? Amen. Amen. Come on, God, just while you're standing over there. Amen. Be, okay. To be honest with you, she's she been a partner of this ministry for a long time. Yeah, she just she, she had to go out and experience some other stuff and, and come on back. Amen. Praise the Lord. This is one of our babies when we were serving as our youth pastors long ago. Amen. She's grown up to be a beautiful lady. Amen. Where, where, your, where your little boy? He home. He kind of want to sleep late. The weekend. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, well, he, he, well, he already, he a member too. Amen. A, a partner as well. So give everybody your name. already know it. We can see it. It's evident. And what we're seeing is a lot of our babies reaching back out and, and coming around. They're adults now. And they're just finding the Lord all over again. I want to say I thank God for you being here, sweetheart. But it's three things I got to ask you. Three difficult, hard questions that I have to ask you in order to be a partner in this ministry. Are you willing to allow God to help us, help you be all God wants you to be? Next one is pretty tough, man. Pretty tough. 
Are you willing to allow God to help us, help you be all God wants you to be? Yes. Wow. Now, them, pretty, them two there probably were pretty easy. But this is the one that really, really counts. I know you're smart, so I know you got it. You a little nervous? No, you ain't nervous. Glad you got comfortable. But here it is. Are you with him? <laughs> to allow God to help us, help you be all God wants you to be. Yes. <laughs> Amen. With that being said, you are officially a partner at Calvary's Way Ministry. And we extend to you the right hand of fellowship. God I pledge your daughter. Come on and give Sister Hamilton a hand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God bless. God bless you. Come on, give yourselves a hand if you prepare your hearts for giving. Amen. Amen. Brother Bennett, always good to see you, sir. Certainly praying for you, keeping you lifted up in the Lord. I, can I can I say something? And I may have said this to you before. That no matter what it looks like, as long as you have breath in your body, God is not finished with you yet. How much? Come on, y'all give him praise. God is not finished with you yet. Do we have any announcements? Amen. Oh, amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. We want to thank our Facebook worshipers, our YouTube worshipers for tuning in with us on today, for worshiping with us today. We pray that you that you heard something that will help you go on and see what the end is going to be. And I can tell you right now, it's going to be big. It's going to be big. God has great things in store for you. Just continue to do two things for me. Stay under the blood. Stay under the blood and determine that there is no quit in you. Thank you for joining us. Joining us, we thank you on behalf of Pastor Sabrina, myself, Bishop Swenson, and the whole entire Cavalry's Way Ministry family. We want to say we go with God and impact lives on purpose with your bloody self. See you next time. Wednesday, power surge at 7 and then again next week, same time, same place, same station. God bless you. We love you. 